Good morning guys and it's an absolute beautiful day to do a review on the Starlink service. Now it's been about two months since my installation video and as promised I was going to come out with a review on how the service has been working and address some of the comments and questions that were in that video. But before that, huge thank you for everybody that's watched that video because it's by far my most successful video and it's greatly appreciated for all the support. This is definitely my favorite time of the year when everything's starting to warm up, the wind has died down a bit, the mountains still have their snow on the top, yet it's about 30 degrees Celsius right now. All right, let's start with what most people want to know, which is the speeds, dropouts, and latency. To give you a better idea on speeds, latencies, and outages, I recorded this data over a one month period. It's important to note this is in Alberta, Canada at a 50.57 latitude and your numbers may vary greatly depending on where you live. The dark blue here indicates a snow day, the light blue indicates a rain day, and the green indicates the best numbers recorded for this period, and the red indicates the worst. So the fastest download speeds were on April 29th at 310 megabits per second, and the slowest were on May 8th at 65 megabits per second. The upload speeds the best being 29 megabits per second, and the worst being 5.4 megabits per second followed by the unloaded latencies and the loaded latencies. The outages were recorded with the Starlink app and broken out into obstructed, other outages, and no satellites. The best day recorded was no outages, and the worst day was somewhere around eight and a half minutes. Just to let you know, these outages aren't consecutive and they won't run all at once. So you won't have eight and a half minutes of outages all at once. What will happen is you'll have your internet, it'll drop out for a few seconds, Internet will kick back on, drop out for a few seconds, and that's what adds up to this time here. And in all honesty, I believe the app is reporting these numbers to be low, and I do believe they should be a lot higher. That being said, we're still in beta, and these numbers should decrease as more satellites are put up. Now, a very common question is how the signal is affected with weather. Now, what I've noticed with wind, there hasn't been any effect one way or the other in high winds. With rain, same thing, no effect at all. With the snow, I definitely seen an effect while it was actually snowing. Now the dish has a heater on it, so any snow that does land on it will melt off and won't affect it that way. But for whatever reason, when it was actually snowing, I was getting a worse signal or more dropouts while it was snowing than when it wasn't. These outages will affect you differently and depending on what you are doing. If you're streaming Netflix or watching YouTube, you won't even notice these outages as these services buffer their data. So a couple of second outage won't be noticed as the footage is being downloaded in advance. Where these brief outages will affect you is in live data transfer, such as video calls or online gaming. Can you install the dish on the ground and not on the roof? Absolutely. It comes with the tripod stand that was shown in the previous installation video, which can be mounted to a platform or directly on the ground. Now there are a few reasons why I decided to put it on the roof and not on the ground. And the first being is obstruction. So these trees are quite tall. They are considered an obstruction, being that it's so narrow between here and the house. And I could have potentially put it over here where there is, the trees aren't as tall and wouldn't be considered an obstruction. But then leads me to the reason number two is now you have to bury your line unless you want to run it over with the lawnmower each time. Which leads me to the final reason I wanted to put it on the roof and not on the ground is that we enjoy the nature. I mean, I don't actually want to see the dish. So it's up there. I can barely see it from this angle, but I don't want it in the middle of my yard. It's not uncommon for us to see deer eating while we're having our breakfast. And also there's this cool little fox that comes and visits us and comes right up to our doorstep. Another common question is that if you can travel with the dish. Currently the dish has to stay in one location, but Elon tweeted just recently that the service should be fully mobile by the end of 2021. He even acknowledged the possibility of a Starlink Mini, which would be great news for truckers, boaters, and campers. Another super common comment is people comparing their wired high-speed internet to Starlink. Now let's get this straight. I would never purchase Starlink if I had access to wired high-speed internet. There are lots of places around the world, including Alberta or rural Alberta, Canada, that don't have access to wired high-speed internet. So to make this comparison, I really don't understand. Because what are the alternatives? There are none. Drip loop, drip loop, drip loop. 
Guys, I could have not foreseen how much the internet loves their drip loops. No, 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 no. I mean like really loves their drip loops. Now to be honest, with all jokes aside, I should have installed a drip loop and it was a huge oversight. So basically what a drip loop is, is this line will continue down past the wall penetration, loop back up and then enter the wall. So any water that passes down or travels down this line will then travel down to the loop, drip down to the ground and then not enter the wall penetration. Now I have some stucco repair work to do in the future. So at that time, I'm most likely will just pull out the silicone pull the line out, run my drip loop, and then re-silicone and put back in. Now with all that being said, I'm not really in a rush to run this drip loop. Obviously if you live in an area that experiences a lot of rain, run your drip loop. But to be honest, a total of zero drops has run down this line in the last two months, just because we don't get any rain. And the rain that we do get is extremely light. As you can see below here, it won't even grow any grass and it's all dried out just because we get so little rain and we definitely don't get rain in this corner. Now I kind of have a funny story about the drip loop, or at least I think it's kind of funny. So stick around till the end and I'll tell you the story. People seem to really enjoy the windy scene at the end of my Starlink installation video, with many recommending I install a wind turbine, and this may be something I look to in the future. In the meantime, here's beautiful Pincher Creek, Alberta, just south of us with their massive wind farms. Another question commonly asked is when do I get my monthly invoice? You are invoiced one month from when you receive an email stating your order has been shipped. This gives you enough time to receive the unit and install it. If you plan on not installing the dish right away, I recommend cancelling the service so you don't get automatically billed monthly. Cancelling the service is currently free and can be done at any time. All right guys, time for the drip loop story. So a little bit of background information. My wife teaches biology and all the courses have moved online. So being that they're online, it's much harder to keep the students engaged. So she was venting about that a little bit. So I decided to give her a little bit of advice. That, I swear to God, she followed with, without hesitation, well, maybe you should install the drip loop. Took me by surprise completely. I absolutely burst out laughing. And I wanna thank everybody that's commented on the drip loop because now I can't give any advice or criticize or anything because it's always followed with, well, maybe you should install the drip loop. Well, you know, it's all in fun, guys, and I really appreciate you guys watching. And like always, liking, commenting, subscribing is always greatly appreciated. Till next time.